Yale Brothers, episode 55. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Yale. This is Chris. And I'm Roger. We're the Yale Brothers, and welcome to episode 55. Double nickels on the dime. Oh, my God. I don't even know what the hell that means. So we are, uh, what, you listening to John C. Dvorak or something? <laughs> is that, is that, is that what he says? Listen, man, it's uh, it's the 26th of September. Oh, yes, it and, is. And uh, whoever's listening to this, it'll be a couple days from now. So welcome to the future. <laughs> or the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Got no future, got no past. Speaking of the past, the song you heard was a live recording of Drag Strip Blues, one of the first songs that Raj and I wrote, and that was our first performance with our band Yale at the Blah Blah Cafe. I think that really was one of the first songs we banged out on the piano in Miami. Yeah. What? what, what? We banged it out on the piano. We were influenced by this set of, I think, brothers who opened up for Andy Gibb in Miami. Um, with their, their little piano sound, and we were, I was just trying to replicate that little piano oh, sound. I don't know anything about this. And uh, like they had this really cool piano intro on stuff. And then I, I don't remember. Well, anyway, then I did that little. Oh, so you basically you ripped it off? No, it would. I'm sure they sh- their shit didn't sound like that. But I was trying to get that energy of that piano thing going back in the day on the old. Oh, is that right? It was, it was mom's old player piano. Oh yeah, well remember that thing. Of um, course, but yeah. Well, anyway, that was uh, the opening of our our first show ever for a uh, well for a band. We we performed before. Yeah, like trained monkeys. Yeah, this was uh, the Blah Blah Cafe. Which, yeah, uh, that's that is that's crazy. We had a bunch of friends from uh, Hollywood Professional School. Yeah, there that night too. Yep, we oh did. My God. We did. Love yeah, you guys. Yeah. Holy crap! <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I mean, I. I'm glad you still have that. Yeah, well. Man, a year ago today, I pronounced my son and daughter-in-law, husband and wife. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. And it feels like yesterday and a long time ago all at once. It doesn't seem a long time ago. To me, it does because um, I don't know why. It could be, feels like yesterday and it feels like more than a year somehow. Yeah. Anyway, I love you guys. Happy first anniversary. That's awesome. It went by fast, man. Went by fast, but then it seems long. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Well, Katie, Kate, my daughter Katie and her husband Bill have been married about six years now. Does that feel fast? Yeah, man. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Well, I don't really, I don't really try to analyze it too much. No, but you bring up Katie. It's funny that yesterday was National Daughters Day. Oh yeah. And um, I saw a post that you made with Katie. You guys looked all very dapper. Thank you. That was an interesting sport coat uh, shirt combo. You Are had. you making fun of me? No, I like it. Oh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I had to go up to a I wedding. Wouldn't, I wouldn't put it together like that, but I had to go to a wedding up in Long Island. Yeah, you did. That well, it was up you, in Roslyn. What a cute little town. You guys look nice. Oh, but I man. didn't know. I really didn't know any. I, I'm must be a really ridiculous kind of person not to know that it was National Daughters Day. I wanted to put something up for Taylor, and because I love her so so much. But our yeah. da- our daughters are something else, man. Yeah, they are. They're Yales. They yeah. were Yales. Kate, Katie's a Barnes now. Does Katie have um, a way of keeping you in check? Sure, just give me a look. That's uh, Taylor too. Katie Wait. and I are two peas in a pod. Yeah, I'm sure. I know you guys are. Yep. That's that's awesome. Taylor, when Taylor gets mad at me, her voice disappears mid down, midway down her throat. If you're gonna do it, please back off the mic. Do what? What are you gonna? I thought you were gonna make some little impression. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. Imp- like I, swallowing her word or something. Yeah, yeah, when she's mad, the anger goes down mid throat. It's gonna be a what, out. girl? Fine. Oh. Uh, dad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great being a dad, and it's really cool being a dad a dad in a, of an adult. Yeah, that's true. That's a trip, isn't it? I love it. All the stuff you had to kind of couch in, you know, you couldn't talk about grown up stuff. Yeah. Although Katie was always a little grown up. Man. Yeah. So was Taylor. Yeah. She was at times. She and she and Betsy were the only grown ups in the house. Oh yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it was just Katie. Most times. Most times. Most times. Um. I mean, I'm saying I'm not talking about Betsy. I'm talking about you're not much of a grown up. No. But you're more of a grown up than me, I think. Well, I don't. I don't judge such things. Me either. Judge not lest you be judged. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, really. Quit judging everybody. Oh, my God. I think Wes reminded me of that when I was getting judgy the other day. Judge? I don't know why. Will you judge Judy? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> I was ready to rule on She's somebody. She's fierce, man. Oh, my God. Um, I'm very excited that our gigs have been going well, both at Lulu's and House of Blues. Oh, yes. Seriously, we bring a... We're, our energy is good lately. Oh, okay. Probably because you're not a jag off lately. So I mean, um, that's for I I I can't judge such things. <laughs> you judge. I not. just show up and play, man. Well, 
something's working out nicely the way we to connect play. with to connect with people is very nice yeah it is very nice and get a get a nice response yes now remember we are not playing for that no i realize that i'm playing for, for playing for the for the for the mute to serve the music right Yes, and please God, I, 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 I'm getting better at not anticipating what's coming later and just trying to play then, the moment. Yeah, yeah, don't think ahead, man. Mm, shit, that solo's coming off. Oh, mess up what you're doing in the meantime. Yeah, that's a recipe for disaster, man. you got to be in the moment, hitting the note. Yeah, oh, that sounds like some kind of thing that you should have on like a projection screen when you do a TED Talk. <laughs> well, there is a magazine called Hitting the Note. It's about jam bands and southern southern rock bands. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hitting the, I think it's called Hitting the Note. It is? Yeah. Do you hit the note? No. Well, I, I, <laughs> my I, voice has been hitting the note pretty well. Your voice has been sounding good, man. I don't know what you're doing. I do my, my vocal exercises. Oh, like we used to hear people around the Magic no, I, Hotel? No, it it's inaudible. I just go smoke a cigar. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, back in the old days, people used to think smoking a cigar and then singing opera was good. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. It it's loosen kind of, up the vocal cords, you know. Kind of as messed up as like a, a smoke, the Michelin man. smoke enema. I, I saw a picture of the Michelin Man back in the day when it was it, it, they were selling bicycle tires, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my! Ooh, God. That was that sound. <laughs> that was that some weird? No, I would think that was me. That was soda. Oh, oh my! God. No, anyway, but yeah, no, no. It, it's it's been good, man, and uh, I'm liking my little acoustic fly rig. It makes any of my guitars dialed into a good sound yes. but i want to get the looper going you told me i can't keep up with the looper that's because once it's in the loop once i, I kick the once, looper on once it's in the loop it's uh you know you got to be conscious of the tempo i can't fluctuate with you no all of a sudden you you tend to speed up no, so all of a sudden the click track comes on mid-song kind yeah, of. you got and w once that's on you have to you have to pay attention to that I can't be paying attention to your your uh, your time. You have to pay attention to that. Anyway, I'd like to do that so I can noodle around while that's going on. Oh, fiddle about. Yes, uh, you won't shite as I fiddle a bite. Very funny. Uh, I'm very also glad that even though we kind of didn't want to do it, we we trotted out Thunder Road for the first time. Yeah, I wanted to do it, but we're I don't know if we were quite ready. But that's good though. We did it though. Okay, yeah, I'd like to have more originals going on, please. God, I I know that, but that's a hell of hell of a lot of lyrics in that song. Not really. I mean, I'm so used to it now. No, are you? Well, you're not singing it. What does it matter to you? I remember the first time I heard that. I was. Uh, I thought that song was longer than it really is. It's not that long. Oh God, it was early in the morning. Cause I stayed up all night at, at our place in Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, I put the speakers down on the floor. And listen on the technique system we had. What? And I, I lay there on the floor, <laughs> listening to it in kind of the skeleton frames of burned out Chevrolets. Hey, what about headphones? No, I just put it on the other thing, on the speakers. <laughs> in Miami, when I was a kid, I, I put speakers, a mom speakers on one side of my head and one on the other lying on the gr ground, listening to Yes, close uh, to the edge, the whole album. <laughs> did mom walk in? No, man. No. Yeah, the, but you don't really want the headphones on. Yes, I do. I don't know. Why wouldn't you want the headphones on? constricting. You have headphones on I, now. I wanted to hear the sound like through the air. Oh, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I it's think like I, you you're monitoring for when you're mixing. I wouldn't suggest using cans. I think I took a Black Beauty that, the night before. Did so what, I, it was up. When was that? Like early 80s in Hollywood. You didn't give me one. I only had one. Shh. I, I don't know. I like them. <laughs> <Are you? laughs> I like them, man. I like energy. Oh, I see. Yeah. Anyway, I enjoyed that. Then I had to go to work. Oh. Later. Uh, that, you remember that feeling at the Magic Sleepless? Hotel? Sleepless? Par yeah. Oh, no, I don't like that. Sitting at the switchboard. Oh, God. Almighty. No, no, no. Then the day starts and people, oh, no. No, no I don't no. like it. I don't like it either. But, I mean, I, that's the first time I heard Thunder Road. Good song. <laughs> what was it, Nate? What was it? Album title? Born to Run? Oh yeah, Born to Run. That's right. I heard. Oh I heard gosh. the whole. Al I heard at least one side of that album, for the f for the first time. The album. Congratulations. Oh, the boys you sent away. Skeleton frames of burned out Chevrolets. I. I mean, it, it made me kind of sad. Oh. Uh, 
Did Bruce make you sad at all sometimes? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes when I listen to some of Bruce's songs that aren't really that great, I get sad. <laughs> okay. I have been listening to a lot the other the other week I was going through his library. A lot of filler on some of those, man. Oh man, I'm a lot of filler. I'm sorry. I used to love all of them, but now that I listen, I still love Bruce. Some of the songs are a little bit. Mm, that's judge not lace. You be judged. Well, uh, mean, that's not. That's yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Well, as in Elton John's case, he ne- there's no bad songs. Bullshit. <laughs> I got a ball and chain. I was listening. Hanging around my heart. I was listening to a Bob new Bob Dylan. Uh, um. Hmm? Out uh, uh, an album of outtakes. I think it's called Springtime in New York. Oh, and uh, you know, just outtakes from different albums through the years. In the early to mid '80s, some stuff from Infidels and all that. And oh, you can yeah, hear yeah, yeah. you could hear the songs transforming. Some of the you know just the lyrics weren't set. No, and, of course uh, not. You watch it evolve. It was very interesting. Very interesting indeed, and also I know why some of those are outtakes. But man, you gotta you put man he puts in the work and and the finished product for Infidels so far superior. Was Infidels one of the two um, Jesus albums? No. Okay. Did he only have one Jesus album? No, you said two. I thought he had two. Yeah, tell me what they are. Slow Train Coming. Yeah, and then what? I thought it was Infidels. Shot of Love. Oh, that sounds funny. That sounds like it's more like a Ron Wood or something. Shot of Love, and then Infidels was after that. Is Infidels one where he's got Ray-Bans on? Yeah. Oh, I remember that. That's one of my favorite albums of all time. Not that Sly, I... Sly and Robbie doing the uh, rhythm section. Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare. Oh, my God. I think okay. they're from Burning Spear. I may be wrong. Maybe, but we'll check it out. No, no, we'll we're not going to check it Maybe out. I'll check it out and put a link. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's interesting. Oh, he's great, man. And I love by the way, I love those two Jesus albums. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you do. Yeah. I only I'm only now just starting to listen to Bob Dylan, so. Yeah. Well, you got a lot to listen to. Yeah, I know, but I like him. I told you since I saw that um review oh god, what Rolling was, Thunder? Rolling Thunder review documentary. Yeah. That I, I love it. I love that. Sure. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's good, man. It's crazy. He's uh, he's getting up there, man. Yeah, he is. There's Did so- you see uh, Echo in the Canyon? Yes, I saw Echo in the Canyon. Oh, that was nice. Was um, with too his- bad Bobby didn't show up in it. No, but his son did a good job. Yeah, that was good. That was good, and all the uh, Roger McGuinn stuff and all that. Oh yeah, for sure. I still haven't embraced like Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, and all that. You don't like them. Uh, Somehow I still don't, I don't, I I can't listen to it. I don't know why. Um, I love Stephen Stills. Yeah. Still, didn't he? I love Crosby. I think Lionel Richie did. I like Manassas. That's good stuff. Did a tribute to Stephen Stills. Who? Lionel Richie. Did a tribute to Stephen Stills. I I still love you, Stills. Oh, boy. (laughs) Hmm. Was that supposed to be some kind of joke, man? I don't know. It made made me smile. I didn't even know what you were talking about. It was very incongruous. I still love you. Man, I got some... I st- do love you, Stills. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I have two scratch-offs here. Did you win? I'm, I didn't... I just like having them for a while, not just looking at them and not scratching them. Why don't you scratch one off right now? I don't now? like to check the numbers. What? So I could see your disappointment. All right. He's going to scratch one off. <laughs> Excuse me, that didn't. Sound, that sounded a little not right. Oh shit! Well, we don't have that much time. This isn't Joe Rogan's three-hour podcast. Keep talking. Well, that's cr- talking. Dig, Chris, dig a deeper hole so Chris, I can Chris, kick Chris, your ass. I can't help it. I like to make incongruous stuff going on while Chris is rattling around. The House of Incongruous. What's that? House of Congress. Oh, that's even worse than still. I I do love you, Stills. Listen to that. Listen to him go. Anything? No, that's just... I'm just scratching my ass right now. No, he's scratching one off. There's something wrong with you, dude. You're scratching one off. Let's see. What do you got? I don't know yet. Oh, my God. It's the whole thing. Why, why do you have to even scratch them off? Why can't they just give you one? <laughs> you know? I don't know how this one works. And now he's got to figure out the mechanics of the lottery ticket. Prize, $1. Okay. Let's see. Scratch the play area to reveal coins. If coin values add up, 
No, no, now there's math. To over $1. Yeah, oh no, there's math. Now there's math involved in that shit. 50, 60, 75, 80. <laughs> I didn't win anything. You didn't man. win shit, and the prize was only $1, and you had to do all that work. It wasn't even worth it. That's crazy. It wasn't worth the powder it took to blow its brains out. Yeah, uh, and you were listening to Yes on these he- speakers. Yeah, close to the edge. Yeah, that's another band I have to kind of sideways walk you actually to. don't have to <laughs> no, my, i mean i i mean call me call me shallow okay shallow but i liked owner of a lonely heart the best what's shallow it's a kick-ass song man oh my god well that i think they had a fair light or a something they had some sin clavier what they had was trevor horn they had a sin clavier yeah trevor horn yes that song sounded great man i Damn, know it's pop but it i awesome. like pop good pop stuff like that man i blasted that song and that weird guitar sounding solo isn't guitar no, probably not. No, it's that Sin Clavier. Yeah, it's, Sin it sounds Clavier. like a keyboard. Um, yeah. And did you know that... I loved all... The, I love it. I mean, uh, maybe the, the hardcore progressive rock guys eh, didn't yeah. like it. That's probably... Like, like the hardcore folkies didn't like when, when Dylan went electric. Hey, so what? Like, yeah. A song is a song, and if it sounds good, I'm all over it. Sounds good. But I want to ask you, do you know this little bit of trivia about uh, a particular Van Halen song? Oh, God. It just came to me now. Mm-hmm. You know that cradle will rock. Yeah, that sound at the beginning. Yeah, what do you think that was? I have no idea. I mean, what do you think it is? When you hear it, what does it sound like? I thought it was a guitar. I thought it was too, but it's really a, a synth plugged into a bunch of uh, Marshalls. <laughs> that, uh, that I heard someone say that. I thought, um, and just like overdriven and all that, and it was not even a guitar. You know that for a fact? Well, I I heard. Oh no 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 <laughs> no no that that in, in the political realm people hear a lot of stuff too and oh, they're oh, I hear hardly this. a fact. Hey wait, I I happen to know fact that check false. I happen to know that there's chips going in us with the vaccine. Oh, you I know what's the mark of the I beast? I happen to know. I'm not going to get the vaccine because I'm a Christian. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I happen to know that yeah, there's so are... much for the greater good. Then yeah, mm-hmm. right, um, dude. I was thinking about. Remember Joe Mahar? Of course. I oh. love Joe. I was thinking about him the other day. And we know, I mean, he, the backstory. Good friend of dad's. Yeah, he stayed at the hotel, became friends with dad's. Dad, he went to dad's funeral. Do you remember seeing yes, him Yes, I there? do. Yeah, he's gone too. He is gone. He died in 1998. But when we, he stayed at the Magic Hotel, and I tripped out. I'm sure you did too when we met him because we saw Heaven Can Wait numerous yeah. times over one summer. Yeah, Fisk or Sisk. Sisk. He yeah. played Sisk. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Before we met him, and then we're like, "Oh, that's Sisk," and then he's actually a real guy, and it was it was fun. He was a very nice guy, man. You know, he uh, were you there when he once wa- he walked in with Chevy Chase? No. Were you there when he walked in with Ken Howard? Remember the guy from the White Shadow? Mm, yeah, maybe. That's, I mean, maybe I was there. Buddies, that's. Um, did, did dad did dad and joe go up to drink at the yamashiro i bet they did didn't you go up to the yamashiro and, and see joe mahar at the bar i saw joe mahar at the bar but that was after dad died oh was he wasted he was wasted did he want to make out with you something i didn't want me to sit on his lap but <laughs> yeah, that, I, I i just attribute that to the the alcohol the drinking <laughs> yes i know i'm because just kidding. sober no one would ask me that give us a kiss yeah give um, us a kiss give us a kiss that's drunk um but he randomly invited me to go to the chinese theater with him to catch um a date date a matinee of the natural oh yeah remember that with yeah, robert redford sure so i walked i saw up. it there so it's only you know how close it is but i walked down there in the old-fashioned flip-flops yeah Ooh. and my feet hurt man those little piece between the big toe and the other toes Remember sometimes that would hurt the top of your foot a little bit? Hell yeah. I'm glad flip-flops aren't like that anymore. But Well, they still are. I have some old Navy ones that I paid a couple of bucks for. I love them. Yeah, I've got some also at home that have a little palmetto. I was wearing those when I hurt my Achilles tendon That's to, playing and, basketball and, and, with, with uh, Elijah well, and Bill. I, I can't talk about Achilles accidents because I messed mine up royally, but you... That was stupid. You what? It went under your leg or something, under your foot or something. How do you do it? I don't know. I twisted something or I don't know, but man, it's still kind of irritated. It's no good at your age. No. Well, it's no good being drunk, playing basketball with one of your grandsons and your son-in-law. No, I kept telling him I saw him playing basketball. On concrete with flip-flops. I kept telling him when I went to visit him, I'm the bus driver. I'm going to take you to school. 
Who'd you say that to? <laughs> Elijah. What, playing basketball? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I kept missing my little free throws. Yeah. Anyway, so. There's one more thing about Joe Mahar, though. Yeah. Who was the guy who was in the Elephant Man who stayed at the Magic Hotel? Someone Nielsen? Richard Nielsen. Not Rick Nielsen. No, no, not Rick Nielsen, dude. <laughs> Duh. Anyway, There's room for only one rock star in that show, David Bowie. He got hammered with Joe Mahar. Yeah. He was so hung over the next day, he was cussing him. Where is that fucking Irish? Oh, man? yeah, I remember that. I, that guy used to drink, man. Whoa. Both of them. I mean, Richard Nielsen. But Joe Mahar used to drink, get red face drunk. Yeah, red, so get so red face drunk that it stayed red face. He's Irish, man. I mean, yeah, it that, stayed I mean, Irish. That, it was. I, lo- I really. He was nice to us, though. Yeah. Here. Nielsen was a nice guy too, man. He was. Ooh. Uh, Nielsen Schmielsen. Let's change oh. this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was nice too, man. Yeah, but Rick, uh, Rick, uh, Joe Mahar was lovely. He was, but I mean, I, I'll never forget that we really were taken with him in um, Heaven Can Wait. Well, it was great in that. I he love was that so good movie. in it, man. He was. Oh, dude. yeah. But, um, hey, was Anne Margaret in that? Huh? Was Anne Margaret in that? I don't know. Is, um, oh, God. Some, Julie. I don't know. Julie Christie? I don't remember, man. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we'll find out. That's what the internet is for. Yeah. Oh, I got that confused. Sorry. With what? Anne Margaret, because I don't know why. Because you like Anne Margaret. Yeah. Tommy, oh, yeah. can you hear me? Oh, she's she's great. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, man. Oh, yeah. Dude, I need to be more consistent with my blogging. I notice it's been like three weeks since oh, I... Take it easy, Seth Godin. Oh, please. Um, so be consistent. Don't talk about it. Just uh, do it. Well, I've got bogged down with one that I'm... Like, I got to be more consistent and less afraid to speak my mind. See, he's got... He wants to speak his real truth, but he do, he's afraid of alienating... No, yeah. People, which I th- I say, do it and get your real tribe. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, this I have one about. Remember, Mister Sheets at Dad's old apartment building. Yes, I do. The well, America, love it or leave it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sticker on the old car. He was. Guy? He yeah. seemed like a miserable old bastard. Oh yeah. And he was the. What are you doing? Scratching just off? Just talk. Just talk. Well, he, he seemed like a miserable old bastard. Yeah. So I started like that because the first time I saw. Uh, he had like an old car, remember, but it was in good shape, like well-kept old car. Yeah. I don't know what it was. But I saw this bumper sticker that said, America, love it or leave it. It's like, well, that was like, during the Vietnam thing. It, it was, this was like 1969, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and it made me feel weird to see something like that. Like, what the hell does why that fe- mean? Why feel weird? And why do you think you have the right to tell anyone else to leave? Just because you disagree with the government policies doesn't mean you don't love America, man. That's exactly right. But who Give said, me I mean, I was, I was six years old. I didn't know what I disagreed with. It just made me feel weird. Mm-hmm. Like who the hell died and left you mother superior? Yeah, exactly. It's, um, plus I didn't like him also later. He, he caused trouble with dad cause we were recording a little, uh, radio skit. Yeah. Like that me and you made up and dad yeah. acted in. I remember that. Robert's reel to reel. Yeah. And we had like sound effects and knocking and all that. Yeah. I don't know what he thought. Maybe he thought me and you were ladies or something, and he was making some kind of weird thing up there. Who knows, man? But he threatened to call the police and all that. Oh. And Dad wasn't, it was a very tense moment. Well, think about it. You have neighbors upstairs. Yes, yes, exactly. And they're not doing anything and they're loud. Exactly. Can you imagine me, you, and loud dad? Tromping and talking into glasses like it's a microphone and all that. Laughing, yeah. recording. Yeah, he was in an echoey kitchen, you know. Yeah, I get it, but I still think he's an asshole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, a miserable old man. And I don't think he was a World War II vet. He was, too old, he, too old. But I don't think he was a World War One vet. No, he was somewhere I don't know, in the middle there. But he's certainly like an Archie Bunker type. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Exactly. But I, I don't understand who owns maybe the, the right Spanish to say, American. <laughs> He owns the right to tell other Americans that they are not American. Oh, if you don't think the way you don't, they, it's think always like they, we do. they, you're this, not, they, that. Yeah, you're not a patriot. I no, no, am no. a patriot. You're I not am a, patriot a patriot because you don't, you don't think the way we do. We are patriots. You're you don't, not. You don't jump off on these catchphrases. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I want to jump off on. Maybe these people are just jingoists in those freedom T-shirts. They're not even real patriots. Hey, you might as well have just blogged it. 
Because now you've said it I don't, all. I don't know what a real patriot is supposed to be. Shh. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not cut yeah, and dry. It's not like. Sometimes you, the most patriotic thing you, you think you can do is dissent. Yes, and but I'm I'm wondering, you know, what is it? What makes? Oh, but you're a communist if you don't think like we do. <laughs> really? I beg to differ. Uh, yeah. It's so cut and dry. No, I don't understand. It's so, it's so either or. It's so left or, or right, black, white. It's nonsense, man. You're one of them. What happened to moderate, man? Yeah, that's true, man. What did happen to it? What happened to be like a, a balance of, of, of capitalism and social programs? Yeah. I mean, people take advantage of social programs all the while decrying the communist oh, thing. Oh, of course they do. And I'm talking about right-wingers. I know. On I know. disability. Yeah. Uh, That's moving different. Moving to another state to get free care. Yeah. And then bitching about everyone else getting it. I, I see it all the time. I see it all the time, too. It's, uh, it's It ain't it's right, It's the I essence of hypocrisy. Oh, please, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah I'm, so I'm, don't bitch to me if you're getting some kind of government check, man. Mm-hmm. Don't bitch to me. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's interesting. But no one bitches to me because I, 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 I'm unbitchable. <laughs> I bitch at <laughs> you all you know, the time. Honestly, I don't have anything to say. Well, I bitch at, bitch at you all the time. I'm not talking about I got, you. I got this thing inside me that goes like, ooh, this, what, what the hell? Damn. Uh-huh. You believe what? Um, Dummy said, hmm? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, everyone, I mean, just leave everybody alone. Yes. Then, you know, oh, the country, I, I feel sorry for my grandkids oh. or because it's not, it's not the same. No, it's never going to be the same. Love it or leave it. No, no. The demographics changed. Yeah. The culture That's has what changed. People are sore about. So it's not going to be the way you wanted it. It's not going to be some back to some idyllic thing. And idyllic in the 50s was hell for some people. Yeah, for a lot of people. We know women. Disenfranchised. Yeah. Black people. Yeah, sure. Gay exactly. people. Exactly. They didn't have freedom. No. No way. I mean, please. It's never, I mean, embrace progress. Yes, I Roll I agree. with it. Surf the waves of life, man. Whoa, where do you come up with this stuff? What are you reading or watching lately? Okay, too long. You're going to make, some, make up some I'm reading lie. that big magic book you lent me. Oh, Elizabeth Gilbert? Yeah, I love Liz. I, I didn't lend it to you. Our friend Chris Dell told me you could have it. Well, I think he wants it back. He does so not. I just I talked to him the other day. He said you could have it. He said take as long as I want. Oh, okay. But he, okay. I like, I, like, I, like, uh, I like Liz. Yeah. Yeah. I do, too. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. I, um, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. Bob Lefts, it's... Oh, that yeah. we're still. I'm, I'm still halfway into that broken ball. record with uh, oh, with Rick it. Rubin. Oh yeah, I don't really. Want, I don't have much room in my queue to add anything else. I just don't have a lot of time to do the th- absorb the media that I that I that I'm interested in. Nobody can. No. Nobody can, dude. I got uh, there's Malcolm Gladwell on one called the Pushkin. That's uh, uh, that's the same the same people that do broken record. Oh really? Yeah. That's cool too, man. Yep. I'm reading. Speaking of Chris Dell, I read his um, post grad thesis on acting. It's called Core Shamanic Technique. It's the Collision: Core Shamanic Techniques for Character Building wait, in wait. Theatrical Production. He wrote that. Yes, he did. No shit. Yeah, and he talks about like a, a lot of these names that came in and out of my consciousness. He's talking about like achieving like an altered state of consciousness before developing your character that's beyond so, method so you, actor yeah it is beyond method actor so he must be familiar with stanislavski and all that he's got like um meisner came in he studied there strasberg's in there so uda, hagen, course, uda hagen stella adler uda hagen stanislavski Gr- grotowski i think i forget i got that guy's how about name stella wrong. adler i said stella adler oh uda how hagen. about steven adler from Guns N' Roses <laughs> drummer. Oh God, bless! I saw yeah. him on like uh, Celebrity. <laughs> you know the Stella yeah. Adler Theater, and they had a branch in Hollywood just across from me on off of Argyle. Yeah, is that where people come out yelling Stella? <laughs> no, they're drinking Stella. Mm-hmm. Where was it? Uh, they had a small one in uh, on Argyle off of Hollywood Boulevard, I think. Oh God! Right across the street from Graphic Communications for Capital there. Oh, that's really cool. Anyway, I, I finished uh, uh, Chris's thesis. It's really, really good. Really, so, no, that's interesting, packed. man. It's dense with, um, like, 
footnotes and bibliogra- bibliographical stuff. I think I got that wrong. He needs but. to move back to Hollywood. He wants to. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. does. Well, don't you? I don't know. Don't You don't want to move there, man. I'm not sure I want to move there, no, man. I'm just kidding. Unless I can afford it. Of course. But um, so now I've started Obama's A Promised Land. What, you are a liberal. What great <laughs> What great writing. He's great. He's eloquent. Oh, my God, dude. And You read a lot of political books. On the documentary side, check this out. I, I just started watching Every Little Step. I don't know what that is. Why are you it's looking a, at me for? I just want to see if you if that sunk in. I don't know what that is. It's the it's a documentary. <clears throat> it's a documentary about um, dancers vying for a part in the revival of a chorus line. Oh my god! <laughs> and it, it goes into these tapes and old videos that, you know, from back in the day of how the 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 original chorus line came into play. Yeah. It was so cool. And they have parts of songs and stuff, and it's great. Oh, that's cool. I loved it. I love it. I love it. I know you do, man. So. So do I. Oh, yeah. I loved it, man. It was a great show. And I love you. Love you, too, you monster. <laughs> well, this sounds like that was a wrap. That sounds like he's ready to wrap it up. No, I'm not. Ready Unless you have it something up, meaningful to say. You had some great thing you brought up about... Um, Tony Perkins that I didn't I forgot all about oh I told you I was going to tell you next time okay let's save that for next time that's really cool okay then well, alright so we're the Yale brothers and uh, this was episode 55 double nickels uh, little ranting going on but hey you know anyway if yeah. you would like to get in touch with us send us hate mail whatever you want Yale brothers at gmail.com yes and uh and you can still find us on facebook yeah yeah we definitely need to put a website together man. yes we can i'm surprised we don't <laughs> anyway <laughs> yale brothers put some rinky dink one up for now a landing page yeah just a landing page that's it landing strip <laughs> oh, all right well yale brothers out rock and roll <laughs>